the word of god is alive and powerful sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart all scripture is god breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works study to show thyself a prudent unto god a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth or accurately handling the word of truth Romans 121 tells to us professing themselves to be wise they became fools without really realizing the true purpose of the historical trends of revelation 2 to 7 2 to 3 and the same letters which apostle paul writes again from the book of romans corinthians thessalonica and the further four great epistles galatians ephesians philippians and colossians the church age corpuses even we have much more to learn that revelation 2 and 3 teaches about except smyrna and philadelphia were been not reproved or corrected but rather given greater instructions except romans and the book of ephesians is a great truth of doctrine 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 which we have to learn rather than indulging ourselves in the things which is not right dear brethren corinthians for carnality galatians for legality ephesians philippians and colossians for our life in this unique spiritual one why have we been kept alive and since many men professing to be wise not understanding the spiritual gift of a pastor teacher in teaching in teaching the word of the lord to the congregation many men have gone astray many men have really not understood the word of the lord they have not really come to the point of realization of the truth they have not learned what it has to be but they have really like second corinthians 11:3 have become of prey for the cunning fables of satan when in luke 19:36 we learn they lay down their garments before him so that our lord could walk through the call the garments are the righteousness of our lives they are nothing even though we can earn and do much in the word of the lord even they are nothing they have to be laid down because we are unprofitable slaves and that which is our duty to be done we are doing it that's the principal item over there but many of the men do not understand this neither they give time for revelation 2 and 3 neither they understand the pauline epistles and that's why the pastor teacher commands given to them have been not understood the true purpose of the pastor teaching work and therefore they have indulged themselves in those things which are not at all worthy to be considered but we have a great lesson in malachi chapter 4 or chapter 3 verses 16 and following telling to us in verse 14 you have said it is vain to serve god and what profit it is that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked mournfully before the lord of hosts and now we call the proud happy yes they that work wickedness are set up yes they that tempt god are even delivered but our lord tells doing mischief in the temple of lord and not giving them sound doctrine will be revealed in the verse 16 through 18. our lord is so clear in the teaching of him he tells then they that feared the lord spake often one another and the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that fear the Lord and that thought upon his name. And they shall be mine, said the Lord. And furthermore, it stands written, said the Lord God of hosts, in the day when I make up my jewels and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth me. Then those men shall return and discern between the righteous and the wicked, between him that serveth God truly and him that serveth him not. That is the judgment what we are going to get. Dear brethren, we may think we are serving the great Lord. But if you are not serving according to his worship orders in the word of the Lord, then you have already lost the battle. Professing themselves to be wise, they became insipid, they became fools. But we are not here for that. We don't have an excuse or ignorance to be pleaded of the judgment seat of Christ like the Corinthians or the Galatians. 
because they couldn't have the completed can of scripture, but we do have now the completed can of scripture in our own vernacular languages, and Bible is the only one which has been given in many, many thousands of languages where the people can read it in their own terms. So we are not out of excuse, neither we are out of the free volition. Because we can claim, Lord, I do not know. Neither you are out because you have been given the bona fide gift of a pastor teacher. You have been given the indwelling trinity at the moment of salvation. You cannot claim an excuse, dear brother, and be very careful. They that fear the Lord and they that have been taught to fear the Lord will be remembered in a book of remembrance in Malachi 3.16. Dear brother, and think over this. Where are we? If it has not been properly trained enough for you to know, get down upon your knees and ask the Lord to have right into fellowship with Him. And Lord will direct your paths to know what is rebound, what is the ministry of the fellowship of filling one, of the Holy Spirit. It is not gibberishly jumping around, dancing around, talking around, or doing miracles, healings, or speaking in tongues. Lord demands only one thing on our path, to learn doctrine, doctrine, and doctrine alone. So think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. In our will, in the privacy of your soul, that you tell to Lord God the Father to believe upon Christ. That is the moment itself we shall have the eternal truth. The eternal truth for us for very simple believing Christ, you shall be saved. Whereas for the believer, the great matters to grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine. You shall learn to acquire to possess the truth, and truth shall set you free. For the privilege of a past teacher it is to carry Sothon Lagan, herald the word in season or out of season, with true didasco of teaching, so that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ might be glorified. Not to worry about the softies, the diameter of my witnesses wherewith you have been called, individual trinity followed by Bible in our hands, the diameter of my witnesses wherewith you have been called, it is our hearers. If there are no hearers, not worry. Besides nature, the entire angelic course will be our witnesses. But our duty is to rightly divide the word of the Lord so that our Lord's name alone should be glorified. So which way you want to go, you think, you understand, you better look. As we shall come back and continue tomorrow in the great divine energy and the divine health which our Lord bestows upon us to meditate upon his word and to really glorify his name as we walk along in this pilgrimage trip in the devil's territory. Father, grateful for the privilege that was given to fellowship you through the word. We thank thee for the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Greater is the one that is in us than the one who is in this world, so that Lord Jesus Christ might be glorified. We ask that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will challenge us and bless us with this message, particularly of Revelation 2 and 3, followed by the Pauline epistles of Romans, Corinthians, Thessalonians, and the four great ones, Ephesians, Colossians, Philippians, followed by the Galatians. To this section, we pray that Lord God, the Holy Spirit, will enlighten us, for we ask in Christ's name, Father. Amen.